Yes. Was there any correlation to someone, some character, or some that you Probably knew? Probably a combination of characters that okay. I knew, people that I knew. Um, yeah. So, uh, and uh, anything, uh, any other questions? Or I just, I'm, I'm happy to answer questions or talk about it. I just. Uh, Having never written a book, would you have? Should <laughs> oh, she could write it. <laughs> Would you have changed anything? Perhaps the ending, or a relationship, or a you know a build up to something. Well, you know the thing is, uh, with, with writing a book, uh, when you write it, you have like uh, choices to end it, and 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 you pick one. And you know that that's going to commit you, so that's that's what I did. And there other there were other uh, options, but um, I think I was so overwhelmed by the you know the, kind of the tragedy of Africa that I kind of ended it on a sad note. Can we play them in a, in a movie? <laughs> Do you know anyone in Hollywood? <laughs> yeah, but she's an actress. You're an actress. No, 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 no just. Who would you, who, I love actors, actors and, and poets. In, and, in, your, in your mind's eye, if you could cast a movie, who would you cast? And, and all three characters? Yeah. Of the famous, geez, I, you know, I, I never thought of that. And I, Great question. Great yeah, question, yeah. Making me think. Mm. What about Robert Redford? No. He never gets the girl. Well, he didn't in the book oh. either. <laughs> reason, no, I, the reason I don't like Robert Redford is because I didn't like his him in the um, Out of Africa. Didn't he? Wasn't he in that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's yeah. why I would reject him. I was him. thinking of Butch and Sundance, like the the blonde with oh, the big yeah. smile, uh -huh. and then yeah. Newman as the other one. Yeah. Yeah. No. Is he called Newman's son? No. Well, let's no. not go there. <laughs> Oh, that's a good question, though. I mean, I'm waiting for the call from Hollywood. <laughs> if you know anyone. No, I don't. Would you like it to be made into a movie? Sure. I mean, why not? Can um, we come to the premiere? <laughs> I, I think, actually, I think uh, Phyllis, Phyllis has been, uh, has produced as a play, and it was really wonderful to watch. And I, uh, I hope I'm not being too self-serving, but there's nothing quite like having, uh, having something on the stage. You know, it's just totally do well, you're an actress, so okay, Morgan. You went back when Paul went back and they had their night together and she wore this gown that was sort of supposed to be her wedding dress. Mm -hmm. Did you know at that point in writing the book that she was gonna die? No, I don't think so. I think I think I was these things even rereading it a second yeah. time. I was like, Is that a clue? <laughs> just it's just a it's just a those are weird, weird things that I don't think authors even understand, you know. If you write it chronologically, you sit down one day and go, I'm going to write a story, it's going to be called, let's see, and then just have it evolve, or you do you have, have it already that is, planned out? That is a classic question for any writer. Where do you start, and how do you do it? And I just saw a wonderful um, thing on TV, it's like a little seminar um, by this mystery writer. I don't read him that much, so I, in fact, I don't read him at all, so I don't, I'm, I'm kind of blanking on his name. Um, but maybe some of you have seen this. These are series of, they have one for acting, and I think the one for acting is done by Dustin Hoffman or someone like that. Um, and this mystery writer, he, he takes you he takes you to the beginning, and his big thing is outline, outline, outline. You know, start out with an outline, which I could never do. No. I tried. I would be changing my mind every five minutes. Say what? I would be changing my mind every five minutes. I had to put an outline down. Well, no, but his point is you do one outline. You do probably you do 15 outlines before you get the book done, but he thinks that's the best way to do it. Now, I, I see the merit in that. Patterson, James Patterson. It's called, if you check it, James Patterson lectures, um, it's a series of lectures. And, and you should watch it, I mean, because he's just really instructive. I mean,
Even for me, who, who has written a book, I find it very instructive. Your book, Laura, like that movie, Sliding Doors. <laughs> you just have a lot of sliding doors. <laughs> I didn't see that one. It was basically the beginning of a story, and it could go this way. The subway doors open, and you get on the train. The doors close, and she doesn't. And it was like parallel stories. But I think Laurie would have a bunch of them if you can't decide. How much um, input does the publisher have to what you're writing? Originally, it was published by um, a publishing company, and, and she was asking Diana was asking me if it was self-published. No, it wasn't. Originally, it was published by uh, Ashley Press, which is in Port Washington, Long Island, and uh, they went they went bust. And um, so then I I had the book and I just sent it to uh, Amazon, and they they published it. Um, I didn't. They wanted to leave in the. They were willing to leave in the Ashley all that stuff, but I. I didn't want to get into some kind of a uh, lawsuit or something, you know, just in case. So they said, well, let's, we first published that, and, you know, because uh, they had a contract. I had to sign a contract that said the next five books you have to sell to us or whatever, you know. And I, I kind of went into a, like, the, you know what they say about the Red Sox? We lost 11 games in a row, and then we went into a slump, you know. <laughs> I went into kind of a writer's slump. Uh, now I'm picking it up again, but I have more time now. You know. How are your sales doing on this? I heard today that the sales in Africa on this book are way up. Is that accurate? Uh, well, it, uh, you know, it's uh, it's like number eleven in um, Nigeria books on Nigeria, um, but it's been number one. It, it goes up and down, but that's not you know that's that's just genre. Those are genres in Amazon. It's not like it's number one on Amazon. It's, um, it's number one on Amazon, Africa, adventure, whatever, you know. <laughs> it's narrower and narrower. How many hours a day do you write? I'm kind of between books, so I'm not writing that much right now. Um, um, but if you, the only time I can write is in the morning, just the way my body is, my brain, everything. It's always been like that. So I could probably write about four hours a day. My favorite author is Somerset Mom. Who likes Somerset Mom? Anybody? Did you ever read him? You did. You never read? Him? He Somerset Mom. Um, Cakes and Ale. That was one of his books. Uh, the Moon and Sixpence. He uh, he was a, uh, at one time he was the most popular writer in the world, so it's interesting how people come and go. You know, it's M A U G H A A M Mom Somerset. Check him out. Wonderful short stories. Wonderful. He lived in he lived. The reason I think I like him so much is he lived in uh, in the colonies uh, in Penang place in the Orient, the Far East, and uh, he, uh, his theme is always kind of this, you have the, the colonial person, the person from the colony who, who goes to work for, for, the, the, for actually England would be the, they leave England because they, they can't quite make it in England, so they go to a, a colony, which was less competitive but then there's this whole thing about the human about the dissipation of the of the, uh, the European the Westerner when they go to these exotic places and how they they just deteriorate kind of and in, 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 uh, into um, murderers and drunks and you know uh, but it's it's really it's really interesting uh, character studies. The award that you got on the first one, was it for this book or which book was that for? Wh which one? The one that you emailed me to, it was a literary award. Oh, um, uh, I got 
uh, two awards. Well, I've got this award, um, award on the Phyllis book. Um, it's called the E Lit Award. It was a It awards people who successfully publish or something publish something that they like on an ebook, all right. And then um, I got a real good the Kirkus Review. You've heard of the, anyone here the Kirkus Review? K I R K U S. They gave me a really good review on uh, on Af on Phyllis, and I'm up for um, uh, your book of the year. One of these book, book of the year for this for this Phyllis, so, uh, but I can't, I'm sworn to secrecy. <laughs> Tell us about Gettysburg. About the what? Gettysburg. What's oh, Gettysburg. Gettysburg. Oh, Gettysburg. We're switching around, aren't we? I know, I have this flight <laughs> of ideas, you know. <laughs> well, we're going to Gettysburg. Every year we go to Gettysburg. We, uh, it's about 30 of us, of us, um, you're all welcome to come. We rent a bus and we go down to Gettysburg really for, for Remembrance Day. Authentic um, fall Gettysburg one year. It was awesome. Really awesome. But what I meant was the uh, book signing. Oh, oh yeah. Well, I'm my new book is I have a mini book tour in Gettysburg. That's where it's going to begin. Um, the, it's going to be at the Heritage Center there, which is right on the parade route. This this. This week in Gettysburg is um, celebrates or commemorates uh, Remembrance Day, Remembrance Day week, is what they call it, and it commemorates actually the <clears throat> the delivery of the uh, Gettysburg Address by Lincoln, and it's kind of a mini national event because famous people come in to um, reenact. I mean, like they had um, Daniel Day Lewis last year; he did. The, well, I don't know if it was last year or the year before. He did the reenactment. And then the year before that, Steven Spielberg. And uh, I was trying to see him while I was down there, but I never got close. Hand him my book and say, hey. <laughs> um, no, I was kidding. But uh, it's it's quite an event. Everybody, you know, the reenactors are there. And there's tours of the battlefield. But it's in November. It's cold. But, but, but everybody goes and enjoys it. You were there, Diane. I was. It was very cold. You're not going this year, right? Uh, still depends. <laughs> you don't think so? I don't know. I'm back in school. I don't want to go. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know. Yeah. Right. I'm asking it, but I don't want to go. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. What did your parents think when you went off to be in the um, Peace Corps? Well, my father was dead. A widow, and uh, I'm sure I, I'm. She didn't fight me on it, you know. Uh, she wanted to keep me out of Vietnam. I'm sure that, that, those were the two choices. And I wanted to go to Africa, so. I mean, I'm sure I, I worried her. I'm sure any parent I know, if my kids went to the Peace Corps, be worried sick. Um, but it is, you know, if you don't do those things when you're young, you never do them. executive with Exxon Mobil, and then when he retired, he wanted to come back to the United States because England had changed Let's so much, and so he became a consultant, and one of the people he life. became a consultant for was Putin. Was who? Putin. Putin. Oh. And he would tell stories about Putin's life, and he would be playing games in Washington like boxing today people concentrating on the game and I'm like crying these stories out of them. But he and his wife lived in South Africa for many years and she wanted to go back but they loved it at the time and um, he said to me he said don't tell Linda he said um, you know I'm in our Africa but I can't tell her because she's so frightened that I'm back in Africa again. And he would tell me stories about He'd be going from one part of Africa to another, and he had a plane ticket. And um, he said anybody could come and offer a larger sum, and he'd get bumped. And he said there was one time that he had to pay twenty-five thousand mm dollars -hmm. to get from one part of Africa to another. It must have been a very important life-saving <laughs> or business thing, you know. But uh, 
Well, that's, that's, that's what he ended up doing in, 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 you know, in, in his retirement days. Well, when I, when I worked in Washington, uh, I had some business contacts who um, would tell me the same kind of story, that they would, they, they would be shaken down at the airport, like even in Kenya, that in order to get out of the country, it would be another $1,000 mm -hmm. on top of the ticket. So um, the company was paying for it, but, you know. But that sounds like a book, that, what you're talking about <laughs> I there. Yeah, he he me, should then, write it. Then he would tell me, uh, Tony Blair, can you Tony Blair? He'd tell me about how, how wealthy he was. I'm telling stories out of school now. How wealthy he was and how he hid his money. And where he hid his money, you know, like he'd buy these magnificent yachts and then he owned 17 homes. And he'd tell me all the details. So he was just full, full of story. One of the most interesting characters I'd ever met. So he should write the book. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. He should yeah. write the book. He um, he kind of expatriated from England, and he now lives part time in Turks and Caicos. Of course he does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad deal. Mm. This was wonderful. Yeah. Thank you very very much. Well, thank you. Thank you all. I, I loved your book. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, when I read it the second time, I enjoyed it. Probably even more, I think. I have to, to say, sure the one. prologue took me a while to get through. The prologue? I, I read it, and I just said, oh, I am <laughs> not going to like this book at all. <laughs> well, it's too many. You don't know, remember that night. Said said you know, I read it like three times, don't and I still didn't get prologue. it. <laughs> it didn't understand, didn't absorb, and then I read the book, so which, it, which was lovely and wonderful and yeah. smooth, and then I went back and read the prologue, and then I got into so hopefully I was able to shed some light on that tonight, too, yeah, uh, the prologue. It's very interesting. I just think that it's so foreign to us that it's hard to um, imagine, you know, all this. Well, maybe not these days when you hear so much on the news, but I just can't imagine being so, such a, well, it's not a small country, but just so just diverse. Yeah. I loved your descriptive passages because I felt like I was right there. Oh, like thank he you. Was talking about how okay. much he loved the plateau, then he talked about all the strife and the conflict. And there was one night scene that you were describing the colors and lavenders mm -hmm. and purple. I felt like I was just right there. It was consistent throughout the whole book. That for me it was. Oh, well, thank you. Place. I think maybe that's why they uh, they call it a travel book. <laughs> because I'm on the train a lot and I'm on the boats and things like that.